Hello everyone, welcome to Scorcher Toys at AnyMoon.com's review of Toy Nami's 1100 scale special ops version VF1J. This toy was an exclusive to Loot Crate, which is a website where you can purchase a subscription where they send you a box every month. Inside the February 2017 box was this toy in normal retail packaging. Inside that box, you got a display stand, which consisted of the base, a regular arm, and an extension arm. Beyond that, you've got three sets of fixed posed hands, one of which is gripping the gun, which obviously you also get the gun. There's two sets of rear landing gear, a front landing gear, four sets of TV style missiles, four sets of Do You Remember Love style missiles. There's a clear canopy for fighter mode. There's a gun attachment piece, which I will be getting to in a little bit here, and three display stand adapters. And those adapters for the first time, beginning in 2017 and forward, have a their own sockets now. You used to get one socket, you had to pop off each adapter as you went through each mode. Now each adapter has its own socket. Now I know a lot of people viewing this video are probably very familiar with the Toynami 1100 line and are just wondering if there's anything new. So I've said yes, that there are uh, now sockets with the display stand adapters, but more importantly, there's been a very minor change to the leg that you might be able to spot. And that is that the slot in the leg has moved upward a little bit. You could see on the special ops version that I'm holding right now, there's a slot there and there's a little bit of filler towards the back of that slot. Whereas on the SDCC 2015 toy, the filler is towards the top of the leg. So that is a big difference that has happened. And what that means for your toy is that the arm pegs now fit closer on the towards the top of the leg which means the leg is less likely to be pulling the arms outward in a way like you can see there so i can actually have the arms fully pegged in and tight and when i have that that slot will sink perfectly up with the arm and not require pulling the arms out at all on this previous toy, when I've got the arms in their proper position and pegged together, the leg slot is actually a little too far back. So to get everything to connect, you basically have to pull the arms out and put them into the legs. And obviously that is far from ideal and very sloppy and it can be very frustrating. So the special ops version now has the leg slots in the proper position, which is gonna make handling the toy much better. So this isn't just a repackaged previous stealth offering, it's a brand new paint scheme. Here you can see the San Diego Comic-Con 2009 Super Stealth VF1S toy. It was really more of a dark blue with black trim. It was kind of hard to see. Then there was the 2015 Comic-Con Stealth version, the VF1J, and that is mostly black with purple trim. And now there is this toy, which is a matte gray with black and red trim. So all unique paint schemes. And this may be a bargain basement toy, but it's also a fully functional toy. And that's why we get all of these different accessories. Now I'm gonna start with the gun. The gun does require a separate attachment piece. And this attachment piece has a couple pegs that go into a couple slots in the arms. Also kind of helps hold everything together in fighter mode like so. Take your gun, you've removed the handle that will be used in bat Bat Lloyd and Guardian modes if you're using Robotech parlance. And you're just going to go ahead and plug that gun into position. And there, now you have a gun installed in fighter mode and it'll stay on there pretty securely, which is nice. We got this display stand that came with the toy. Just a very basic base, a standard arm, no articulation anywhere there, anywhere in that section. But you get up to a ball joint at the top and then a cradle that the gun fits right into and then it can pivot left and right. So some good functionality in there with the display stand in fighter mode. Let's go ahead and remove that. The gun came off there, we'll put that back on. Now, you have, will also notice there are landing gear and they are separate pieces. They're not integrated into the toy. You do have doors that pivot open instead of removable panels like you would get on something like Bandai's high metal toys. Now the downside of that is visually they don't look very good. 
The positive side is you have a few less pieces you need to go fishing for when you put your landing gear up and down. So that'll be attractive to several people out there. The, the landing gears themselves just peg right into place. There's no rubber wheel. There's no detail on the landing gear. All very basic stuff. Just plugs right into place like so. And once it's on there, there's plenty of clearance for that gun you've already installed. Now again, this is a basic toy. There's no opening canopy, no cockpit, no pilot figure. Uh, it's just, it is what it is. I did like that they put little silver paint on the intakes, and a little silver paint on the other side. I think that helps it pop. The gray, black, and red, and again, you can see another little paint flaw with the red there. Uh, it looks good up close with lots of bright lights from far away. It just kind of looks dreary, uh, but that is what it is and has been true pretty much of all the stealth variants. Again, paint flaw on my Do You Remember Love Style missiles. The hard points on the wings function pretty well. Peg right in. The missiles do not rotate around on me. They do not try to fall off unless I bump them off. So nothing to complain about there. I enjoy that very much. Now, looking at fighter mode overall, it has plenty of things that you can take issue with. And again, you have to remember that this is a fairly basic toy. So, there are no pegs in the front that hold the intakes in. And as a result, and perhaps a result of the molding of the chest, there's lots of gaps in the front of the toy. Moving back, the feet are permanently extended. There's no recessing mechanism for the feet. So those can look kind of long and wonky. The backpack itself doesn't peg into anything like it does on most modern toys. So it has a tendency to look like a ramp off the back, a little elevated, and as you're handling it, it's gonna flop around on you. So all of those things, fairly major issues with visually with fighter mode. But again, this is a small, sort of insubstantial or unsubstantial toy. So some of these things a lot more noticeable up close with a video camera than they would be on a shelf. Then there's the head that obviously droops down pretty low. You might take issue with the intake shape. So not the best rendition of a VF-1, but again, at this price range, it's kind of your only option. You end up paying about twice as much for the Bandai High Metal toys. Uh, although I think it's very easy to argue you're getting twice as much toy there if you can afford it. Okay, let's go ahead and check out Gearwalk mode. Guardian mode looks really good on these toys. They've got the right amount of articulation. You've got pivots at the legs. You've got the, the intakes themselves, since they don't peg in, rotate also to let you get pretty aggressive sweeps to the legs and stances all together. But we don't have hands on the toy. So we're gonna take our gun, we're gonna pull it out and extend it, and then we're gonna take our gun gripping hand out of the tray and put it on the gun. And then it's just a ball socket on the one end that just plugs right into the arm. No problem there. Same idea with the hand on the other side. So now we have hands in our guardian mode toy and it gets the nice aggressive sweep still. You can pivot it, pivot the legs to get a few different poses uh, and you can have a lot of fun with it. So guardian mode, overall pretty good. One thing you will uh, run into if you're handling it a lot is that these sockets that hold the arms still are very prone to cracking. I've got a little one on one side there and once they crack the arms pop out even easier so normally not a big deal for it just sitting on your uh, display cabinet if that's where it's going to end up but if you handle these toys a lot limbs falling off may become something that really frustrates you. Speaking of frustrating there is a display stand for guardian mode, you get this little adapter here. It just plugs right in here. And then you're supposed to use this little slot on the very back of the toy to hold it up in guardian mode. But as you can imagine, a slot on the very back of a toy is just gonna make the toy lean forward. So let's see if we can get, a, get it on there. Again, this would be a little easier for you. You wouldn't have lights in your way and a camera, but if we can get that on, there it is, it just kind of leans forward. So, uh, not a very big fan of Guardian mode on the display stand. All right, let's keep going and get to Batroid or Batloid. 
At a little more than 13 and a half centimeters tall, these toys are uh, pretty small in Bat Lloyd mode. They're about 15 centimeters long in fighter mode. It's a pretty close to 1 100, if not exactly uh, on the dot, so close enough, we would say. Uh, when you are looking at them closely, you will notice uh, several flaws. There are lots of little sprue marks. The black plastic on this particular paint scheme really shows it off. So you got like sprue marks there. Um, on the front of the intakes here, obviously the other side of the arm, and really the worst offenders are here on the backs of the legs. But if you're gonna have worst offenders, the backs of the legs is a pretty good place to do that. As I mentioned earlier, the, uh, the arms falling off are gonna be the biggest issue for you beyond those uh, compromises I showed you with, you don't have integrated hands, you don't have articulated hands, you don't have an integrated heat shield, you're gonna do some part swapping there and you don't have integrated landing gears. So those flaws uh, or compromises, definitely things you need to be aware of. And then build quality issues, like look at the flash around the visor. Now any modeler uh, could probably help clean this up quite a bit, but just expect that out of the box. From an articulation standpoint, the head is on a ball joint. You can crook it either way. Uh, you can look up and down with it. You also have the ball joint at the shoulder, which lets you pivot in and out and rotate the whole thing around, which is good. Then there's that little rock right below the shoulder and a twist point at the elbow. The elbow goes just a tad more than 90 degrees, and then the hands are obviously not integrated, so they're a ball joint. You do have ball joints at the hips with pretty good range of motion, so they rock in and out, and that's all good. If you move the wings out of the way, you can also obviously bring them forward like so. Pretty extreme range of motion there. Then you have that gear walk joint right underneath the hip, so we can go 90 degrees there which is good, and then we can come back that far. Also not bad. We have a knee a little more than 90 degrees back, much less than 90 degrees forward. And then we have the feet, which do offer the ability to go forward and back like so. No left, right rock, but you don't really need it at this scale and at this simplicity. And again, the arms falling off. Really the biggest bummer there. Now, so overall, the articulation is pretty good. You saw Garewalk mode was handled very well. And in Batloid mode, I'm sorry, I should say Guardian mode. And in Batloid mode, uh, you, can, you can have a lot of fun getting this toy into the poses you want. All right, so I have the display stand. I've added the extension piece to it, which is on a peg. I could easily pull this off, spin it around, whatever I want to do with it. There is the Batloid adapter piece on the top. It's got a little slot towards the front of it. It just attaches right between the backpack and the toy and just press down. Should lock fairly firmly into place. Your only limitations here are related to that ball joint. You can come back about that far. You can come forward that far. So it is somewhat limited there, but you could obviously pivot to the sides uh, and have some fun with it. Bring your legs up, get it into some poses that it couldn't do while standing, uh, like a falling away pose, something like that. So the uh, display stand will have some value to it, even though it is incredibly simple by design. Overall, if you like this paint scheme, there is no other toy manufacturer doing this paint scheme. So it is unique to Toynami, so you don't really have any other options other than customizing and modeling, and then the world is your oyster. I usually end my Toynami 1100 view, reviews by saying, you know, you got the Bandai High Metal R, or Bandai High Metal toys out there at about 1100 scale also. So those are a better option in all regards, pretty much, uh, but they are more expensive. They're, they're Where this toy would be about $40 at retail, a uh, Bandai High Metal R toy is probably at least 60 so... You, you get what you pay for, but if you're looking for something really cheap you could have on your desk, not be too afraid, someone's gonna walk away with it, not expect too much of it, know that your limbs are gonna fall off and that you're gonna have some build quality issues and just accept that to go with the lower price tag, then these are certainly functional toys and you shouldn't be too put off uh, by what you've seen here. All right, check out anymoon.com for my full review and as always, thanks for watching.